Well, hello and welcome to another edition of Pelham School District Today. Today we're actually going to talk to our technology integration staff. Um, we have our director of technology, Holly Doe, and then we have our tech integrators at each of the schools. We have Kate Liston from the elementary school, we have Allison Bowen at the middle school, and we have Gina Wagner from the high school. So why don't we talk a little bit, Holly, kind of give us an overview of what is a technology integrator? Um, so our technology integrators, we're really um, quite fortunate in each of the schools to have these um, dedicated people to work with our staff. Um, their role is basically to get staff excited about the new technology improvements, the new things coming their way. Um, sometimes they send out emails um, with new advances and new things. Sometimes they send out newsletters. Um, they're in the classrooms a lot, um, so they're visiting um, teachers, checking in, what are you doing today, um, setting up appointments. A lot of their time is um, actually planning with teachers and sitting down and talking about what's your next upcoming unit or lesson and how can I help you with that and how can we infuse technology um, in a really useful positive way um, to make these learning outcomes um, more possible and more engaging for students. Uh, so um, they have a you know a big job um, but they do it really really well um, and teachers reach out all the time to these people um, to, to come into their classrooms and so a lot of the times you guys are working side by side with the teachers um, and that's always exciting so um, you may not feel comfortable as a teacher trying something for the very first time but if you know you have someone who can come into your classroom and kind of be your um, co-teacher um, and work with you then it gives you a lot more confidence that you can do it so and each of you have been regular classroom teachers previously to being technology integrators. So I think that that goes a long way um, with that. And some of you still kind of are in that role. So let's talk a little bit about what does technology integration look like at the elementary school? What does your position look like? And then we'll go to the middle school and the high school, because each of you kind of have it a little different. Yep, so, so at the elementary school, um, I teach enrichment part of the day, and the rest of the day I'm coaching teachers and working with students. So one of my favorite things to do is actually be in the classrooms. And so on any given day, it could be working with preschool all the way up to fifth grade. Um, and I think one of the most important things I do is just really connect students with a wealth of resources. Um, and that can be outside the walls of their classroom. So we've done a lot with um, Google Hangouts and connecting with other classrooms around the country, um, working on geography and math skills, swapping ideas, responding to um, different types of media, and there's also the whole create aspect, which is having students create videos. Um, we're starting to do some blogging as well, doing different coding projects. I mean, all of that just goes hand in hand with the curriculum that teachers are already teaching. And it's just a, just another avenue for them to enhance their instruction. So Excellent. it's an exciting job. <laughs> and you know, some, some of you may be questioning, well, why do we do all of this learning in the classroom and things like that for teachers? We have found throughout the years in education that uh, job, job embedded professional learning is actually the most effective type of professional learning. And that's actually what's going on, is teachers are learning while doing, rather than going somewhere else, going to a workshop, sitting, listening, oh, let's try this, and then go back and try to do it in their classroom, and it doesn't quite work exactly like they thought it was going to, and they don't have somebody to go back to and ask questions and, and adjust, and, and you all are, are kind of that resource for them so that they can, they can learn it and do it at the same time, and it's far more effective. Um, and long term, it's, it's implemented much more um, consistently as a result of that. So we are very fortunate to have them in every school. Mm -hmm. So what, do you, what does it look like at the middle school? So at the middle school, it's a little different. It's one day where I'm actually the computer teacher. So I'm working with the students. I have classes all day long, um, kind of trying to keep them up to date with technology programs that are out there, teaching them programs so that when they go off into their individual curriculum classes, they can say, hey, I know how to do Glockster, can I do that as my project instead of a written poster? So that's kind of my role as a teacher. The other day, um, I am the technology integrator and working with mostly staff that come in and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to do something instead of getting doing a worksheet. Um, I just worked this morning with my um, foreign language teacher and she said, okay, instead of doing this worksheet, 
on vocabulary, what could I do? And so we came up with a whole plan on how she could maybe use a program like Twisted Wave and the kids could record their voices and then instead of her having to sit there and call each student up individually, they could each do their own podcast and then oh, they could listen to that themselves. So um, that's what I um, do mostly with the teachers is give them ideas on how they could take a simple lesson that is effective but make it more effective and and get technology in there and get the kids excited about doing something. So um, my role, um, we've also been lurking, lear, uh, trying to find a an appropriate blogging tool mm -hmm. and I've worked with several teachers and they've been great about trying things and I think we finally have our blogging tool Oh good, because I know three different ones that have been <laughs> yes, worked and I on think recently. Kids blogs, we have um, an eighth grade uh, language English language arts teacher who has used Kid Blog and loves it, and she said the kids are excited about writing now. Instead of just writing it in a journal and throwing it in a pile, they know other kids are going to be reading it, so their peers are reading it and commenting on it, and um, it just gives them a different level of writing. So. And I actually was in that class last week, and I happened to walk in, and I said, oh, what are you doing? And so one of the kids was just thrilled to tell me what it was that they were doing and how they were blogging and why they liked the whole thing. So mm -hmm. it was kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm not surprised they picked that one because the kids definitely were excited about yes, it when I was yes, in there. It's so a great platform. That's so. great. Yep. Um, you know, I got to back up a little bit to that uh, foreign language class. Just think of how much instructional time is saved by the fact that now the students are speaking into the computer and then listening it to themselves instead of each individual student having to go and speak to the teacher yes. individually. Yep. And that would take an entire day, sometimes two full class periods. Right. Now it's a 15 minute activity and you've right. saved almost over an hour of instructional time. And the just student for that has the opportunity to read do it if they don't feel comfortable with it the first time. It's not just that one shot deal. I can, I can listen to it. Oh, I didn't. That was not right. I'm going to go back and I've learned from my mistake, and I'm going to correct it this time. So, Excellent. Um, so yeah, we're excited. Great. So, Gina, how about you tell us a little bit about at the high school? Well, Kate and Allison touched on a whole lot of things that we're mm -hmm. experimenting with at the high school as well, but my job probably looks a little different than theirs because I'm actually a full-time integrator. I'm not technically in the classroom, although I do have um, the P-TECH squad, which is I have some students that are with me in separate blocks throughout the day. I had four last semester. I'll have six next semester. Oh, excellent. Um, and they work with me and with other students and teachers to develop materials, to troubleshoot Chromebook problems, or pretty much just anything, anything that we have come in the door. And so that's been... A really great experience I think for the whole school and mm -hmm. I think they're it's very well known at this point that they exist and people come to them with um, issues and problems all day long even when they're not with me uh, they just pull them out of class and say hey can they can they help me out um, so that's been a nice thing for the high school um, in terms of what one-to-one -one looks like I think what, re what really has been awesome at the high school is I see across all disciplines that um, students and teachers are moving from being consumers of information to creators of information and so um, what I see is teachers um, excited to try new things. Oh, now because students have Chromebooks, I have the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. Whereas before, I could only do a part of X because, as you mentioned earlier, um, a lot of times because we have one-to-one -one devices, we save a lot of time in the mm -hmm. classroom, which allows us <clears throat> to enhance some of the things that we've always been doing. Um, and I think a lot of our job also has to do with um, teachers are excited about using technology, but sometimes there's trepidation. Um, and sometimes maybe we're amateur psychologists to say, you know, it's okay to back off and let the kids take control. And I see that more and more at the high school where teachers are turning the reins over to students a little bit. And that leads to a little bit more personalized learning mm -hmm. as well. Um, so that's kind of what I see at the high school right now. I was in a world geography class yesterday. And the, um, the students happened to be doing their final, but they had just completed um, a... I, th I think a couple weeks long of presenting, they each had a different region that they needed to investigate, and then they had to teach the rest of the students about that particular region. And a large majority of them chose to create websites mm -hmm. that would then showcase their particular region. And these were not simple websites that just, you know, had one or two clicks in them. It was, here's the region, and then here's multiple things along the along the side that they would click into and it would take them other places and, and just the the skill that in and of itself and then presenting to their their peers and creating that information um, I thought was just phenomenal. So um, 
I, I can see that that happening. Um, that project that you're speaking of, there was a great deal of critical thinking that went in to mm -hmm. the organization of the site and the pieces that needed to be in there in order to mm -hmm. represent the region appropriately. So it was fantastic work. Excellent, excellent. So you also have one-to-one -one <clears throat> at the middle school. So what are you seeing as a difference between when we didn't have it and now that we do have it? I, I just see the eagerness of the teachers to jump into something where they may not be comfortable so they become learners as well mm -hmm. and they're actually learning from the students because the students will just take whatever you give them and go for it you know they're not afraid and a lot of teachers who may be uh, a little scared of technology um, they're becoming more comfortable because they know that they can go to their student and their students are going to help them and then they learn so it's a learning process all around it's not just a teacher saying this is step A, this is step B, this is step C. It's the teacher saying, here you go, let's all learn this together. So it's really a nice experience to see the teachers being the learners as well and not afraid to ask a student for help in the area of one-to-one. -one. So at the elementary school, we have one-to-one -one in our fifth grade. Right? Yes. Um, and I, I think we've seen a lot of the same types of things mm -hmm. with the fifth grade. Um, and I think that also we've seen a lot of collaboration between students on projects um, through Google Docs, Google Slides, but also on video projects. Um, and you mentioned communication. And I think one of the things that we're working on providing students with is multiple ways to share their voice and share their thoughts and having some choice in how they do that. So having that one-to-one -one program has really enabled students to have a lot of those choices once they learn those basic skills. Excellent. Um, so I'm wondering if you could each maybe share a story of how you've worked in a classroom and what was maybe your most exciting success um, that you've seen so far. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot to choose from. <laughs> there is. Yeah, there is a lot. I had a fun experience this week working with a third grade class, and we were doing, um, they were learning how to writing, and they were using Legos um, to kind of go along with the how to, and they were um, providing, they were making Lego kits to provide another class <clears throat> with, and the other class would use their how to writing and all the different steps to recreate what these students had built with the Legos. Um, so as they were working on their Chromebooks and, you know, working on their Google Docs, um, we realized that um, we could take pictures of their Lego creations. Well, one or two stu students figured out how to take those pictures and then started teaching other students how to do it. And then the teacher joined in and she learned that new skill too. And so just one little discovery can really spread. And it's been really exciting for the teachers, for, for myself, but also for the students. So. Seeing that excitement is just, it's almost contagious. It's great when you have a lesson plan as a teacher and then the students take it that one step further yes. that you didn't even envision. And that's that, that critical thinking piece that you were talking about and really starting to develop the, um, the creativity and the, the innovation mindset. Yep. Um, excellent. I think uh, seeing students teach other students things that they learn and being truly excited about what they are learning and willing to share and uh, collaborate and just the learning is everywhere and it's being shared and it's being celebrated and it's being and they're excited and I did you know I, in my own class I said to them okay you have a Chromebook teach me something and so they had to go off and they all had to find their their you know whatever it was whether it's taking pictures or video or learning uh, control keys they came back excited that they could teach me and others what they were doing with their Chromebooks. Excellent. And these aspects you're talking about, Kate mentioned student voice, and we want students to be able to have some choice in what they're doing. So the most exciting things that I see at the high school are when teachers give assignments that allow students a choice of medium um, and maybe per perhaps a little bit of choice in their topic. And so I've seen that in several classes that I've been in where, you know, one student will be doing some video editing and over here they'll be doing a slideshow and over here they're creating a podcast. And you see multiple forms of media being created for the same assignment. And that student got to choose what works for them in their learning style. Um, so that's the, that's the nicest thing that I see at the high school. And so many teachers are willing, again, to turn over the reins to students and give them that. Um, personalized touch and when they have a voice in, in that they're a little more excited about doing their assignment as well so you get a better product and better learning. 
So Holly, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about Future Ready. So we are a Future Ready district. You and I kind of jumped into that about three years ago. Nobody else really knew what that meant. Um, we went to a number of <coughs> trainings and workshops and, and we found out more what that was about. And it's really, it's a national movement out of the you know, um, US Department of Education to move, to transform the educational experience for students um, and through the use of technology. Um, and they do advocate moving to one-to-one. -to -one. Um, and we have done that now. We are one-to-one, -one, seven through 12, where each have their own Chromebook and they take home. However, you, you can also hear that we do have enough Chromebooks for all of our sixth graders, all of our fifth graders. And next year, it will go all the way to fourth grade. Mm -hmm. So we will have one-to-one, um, -one, four through 12, and then we will have some extra Chromebooks so that our third grade and our second grade will actually have yes. yeah. um, more access to them as well. So, you know, that's our, our goal. It's not to um, It's not to just add new stuff in, we then, recycle some of our, our other things around. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Future Ready and where do you see us going and how does this technology integration yeah. fit in um, there? So, and, and just to give you some background, um, when we used to do technology planning, our technology plans were, you know, talked about technology integration, but it was very um, rich in what the technology was that we had yeah. in the district. Um, so when we saw this Future Ready framework, um, I think what was um, so, um, exciting to us was that at the core of this future ready framework is personalized learning and you heard them talk about personalized learning you know in different ways and all of their um, whether it was for teachers um, personalizing learning for teachers or for the students so that is at the very core of our future ready plan um, and then we start to look out um, to see you know do we have the infrastructure to meet the needs of personalized learning um, you know, and we did a big summer project um, this year of increasing our access points in our classrooms and making sure that we had the right wireless in place so that our students could access the types of resources you're hearing about. Um, and this summer we'll be doing that at the we'll elementary be doing that, school, that right? at the elementary school. Yeah. We did the middle school and the high school to make, um, um, make those schools ready for one-to-one. -one. Um, but there's lots of other components. Um, professional learning is very important in our Future Ready framework um, and plan. Um, data and privacy will be something we'll be talking about more and working to protect the privacy of our students and and we look for outside stakeholders and parents to help us with that process um, this year um, and um, curriculum you know of course at the core of making sure that we're personalizing learning for our students so it's really a well-rounded framework um, that you know has learning and teaching at the heart of it and technology you know what do we need to have in place to make this happen so so I think the only other thing that, um, that I'd like to talk about is a little bit about digital citizenship. So we have, we've handed these, these kids these Chromebooks and we don't just hand them to them, we have some digital citizenship type um, components to that. Can you kind of overview a little bit about what we're doing in that respect and then what experiences have you had at, at your schools to help support our students understanding what it means to be a good digital citizen. Yeah, and we, we've used the Common Sense um, Media website as kind of our framework for digital mm -hmm. citizenship, looking at those lessons that are on Common Sense Media. Um, if parents haven't heard of that website, it's an incredible website, not just for schools to use, but also for parents to use to look to see if, um, you know, a movie is appropriate to go see or just what type of media your kids are accessing and, and how you can set time limits at home. Um, you know, these Chromebooks have come home and, and the kids don't need to be on them all the time. They're not on them all the time at school. So um, how can you do And it's perfectly acceptable to set time limits on the Chromebooks. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yep. So, um, so we use that as a framework and then we do have specific um, things that we emphasize in the classrooms um, and that I know that um, the tech integrators and classroom teachers um, teach um, in some of our librarians as well. So I don't know if you guys want to share um, any specific um, Lessons that you teach? Um, so for myself, in my own computer classes, I do a, um, a unit with all three of my grade levels. So internet safety for sixth grade, cyberbullying for seventh grade, and digital literacy for eighth grade. Um, so they get it in my class. They are always, I mean, it's in the forefront every day because they, have, they are accountable for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so we have programs in place to find those that might be violating. And so, you know, I think every day those kids are practicing the digital citizenship 
that we would want them to be practicing. And then we, at the middle school, we also have advisory, and January is Digital Citizenship Month. So all of our advisory um, lessons this month have been based around Common Sense Media and um, different models that they're looking at and learning about the different pieces of them becoming a good digital citizenship. And I think at the elementary school, we work a lot on um, using technology to find the answers to questions that we have. And a big part of that is evaluating sources um, and finding out information safely and responsibly. So we talk a lot about what are some great sites that students can use. Um, and we do the whole cyberbullying as aspect as well. And just we talk a little bit about social media. Um, in ways that students can be responsible and safe both in school and outside of school um, and what to do if they have a problem. And I found that this year with the fifth grade a lot of that goes hand in hand with the D.A.R.E. program and mm -hmm. um, some of the decision making that they talk about there too. I think um, you know evaluating the sources is so important and, and sometimes people think well evaluating the sources well yeah that's just research no this is when you're going through your Facebook feed and you see these stories and are they really legit stories and and mm -hmm. we need to have the ability to investigate and determine is this a valid piece of information or is it not and the last thing you want to do is share or retweet or something that's not valid um, so it's important for them to have that skill early <coughs> on because as we know, that, that certainly snowballs and can create a lot of issues um, when that happens. So. I want to piggyback off of that as far as the high school students are concerned. Mm -hmm. Most of those digital citizenship issues are addressed in the classroom with the individual teachers. And, you know, fake news has become something that is in the news quite mm -hmm. a bit. And as young adults, they need to be able to decipher those things for themselves. So I see teachers um, working that in as a talking point and also a lesson strategy for students to make sure that they can do that on their own so that they're informed citizens, not just good digital citizens. Mm -hmm. And so what Kate and Allison do on a daily basis has kind of set the foundation for the way our students behave. And I think Allison hit on the accountability piece. And mm -hmm. so for our students, um, there aren't any specific digital citizenship courses that they get, um, but the accountability piece is the result of the digital citizenship piece because they are expected to behave um, as young adults and teachers do, do a good job of enforcing that and mm -hmm. helping them to regulate themselves like oh we're not doing that right now so let's go lids down um, so that you're not tempted to look at something that you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. So it's a management piece as well. Yeah. yeah and I think we know you know kids may make mistakes sometimes but it's that conversation that's so important um, and having that you know ability to talk with their teachers and talk with people in the building and you know maybe that you could make a better choice next time but they're in a safe environment at school where we can talk about those things and they can learn <clears throat> their mistakes so right. and like I tell kids all the time when they get to my level it's your mistake doesn't define you it's what you do as a result of your mistake mm -hmm. that that says something about you as as a person and, and kids make mistakes that's what kids do and those are opportunities for us to teach yeah. and for them to learn um, and to grow. So um, we have a lot of those opportunities because they have a Chromebook in front of them so often um, and technology in front of them. But I think the, the more that they experience um, good digital citizenship in the schools, the more they will continue that behavior um, even when they leave. So. Um, well, thank you very much for coming and joining me today and uh, giving our viewers a little bit of information about what a technology integrator is and what they do and how integral you are to um, the Pelham School District and the educational transformation that's taking place for our students. It's exciting um, and we definitely appreciate all that you do. So thank you for coming thank you. and thank you for joining us for another edition of Pelham School District today.